Hey, welcome to uh, Five Minute Geek Show episode number five, which is something. I don't know if that's synergy or um, or web- webinar or some other uh, really cool word, but I'm sure that five and five means something, or maybe it means nothing. Um, I'm your host, Matt Stauffer. Uh, and so some geeky things about the actual podcast itself or show or whatever we're calling it feeds.feedburner.com slash five minute geek show that's f-i-v-e minute geek show five minute geek show.com that's also f-i-v-e or twitter at the number five um minute geek show because five minute geek show uh with actually spelling them all out apparently it's too long for twitter to handle theoretically we should be on itunes but itunes is apparently having trouble handling podcasts that are served by soundcloud which they say is going to be fixed in 2015 which means i don't believe them i think it's never going to happen so i'm probably going to move it somewhere else but for now that's what we got several folks asked why i made the five minute geek website in laravel versus just something static or tumblr and whatever and if you go check out the github repo you actually start to see that i'm doing a little bit of work there not all done yet uh clearly but i'm starting to bring in lists of all of the episodes from soundcloud all the episodes from youtube all that kind of stuff one thing i haven't figured out or tried to spend the time on yet is what does it look like to have a video um podcast or whatever you would call it the problem with that is i think that means i actually have to convert the files and host them my own on my own versus just handling it uh via youtube so i'm holding off on that for right now so let's get to the content today we're talking about css oocss bem or bem smacks styly things that most back-end people don't like talking about and since a lot of the people i know online are actually more in the PHP and Ruby and backend spaces, I figure why not talk about some front end stuff from a back end perspective. So this right here actually is a talk I submitted um, to a few conferences and have heard back as a no from one. So hopefully that doesn't mean it's a terrible idea because I heard have not heard back from others. So the concept here is some of these methods that we're doing, which are making our CSS better are not only making it better, but they're making it better using the concepts of how we organize our backend code. So for me, that's like, great, this is an opportunity for a whole bunch of backend developers who hate CSS, who hate dealing with front-end code to actually fall in love with it. So, so here's the idea. CSS, hacky, crappy, all sorts of overlap issues and namespace issues and all that kind of stuff, kind of like crappy old code. And even if you're not a PHP developer, you probably wrote crappy PHP in the past, and that's why you hate PHP and use Ruby now or whatever else. So imagine the CSS that you're used to and the crappy old PHP 4 that you wrote four years ago or 10 years ago or whatever being the same thing, right? So PHP has grown up or you switch to Ruby on Rails or you switch to Python or go whatever. Cool, great. Well, guess what? CSS as a language has gotten a little bit better, but CSS as we approach it has gotten a lot better. Uh, the concept here is object-oriented CSS, and you've probably read me writing about this before. I've got a blog post kind of giving a much better intro, all this kind of stuff. But basically, it's the idea of how do we learn from the, the core concepts of object-oriented programming, and how do we apply those to our CSS? So you've got ideas like the single responsibility principle, or modularity, or all these different pieces of uh, object-oriented programming. If you take them and you r- apply them to CSS, you actually find that you have a much better experience working in CSS, and you write better and cleaner and more predictable CSS. Uh, um, and it's actually a sometimes kind of fun to work with. So some of the pieces there are one, um, collisions and namespacing and all that kind of stuff. So when you're dealing with that kind of stuff uh, in in PHP code, for example, you introduce the concept of namespaces. You say, oh, we've got five different things here named file. Okay, well, let's namespace them, meaning let's put a whole bunch of basically a folder structure above it. Well, a lot of folks tried to do that in CSS and they're like, oh, I'll use the space select, the descendant selector, which is put a space in between them. So you say, you know, dot body space, dot header space space h1 and at first it's like oh great we did a really good job of differentiating that h1 from that other h1 by doing the descendant selectors the problem is now all of a sudden the more spaces you have the more specific it gets and the harder it is to override it and so all of a sudden you're like what if i just want to change the h1 in this one page and you think you can apply just a single class well no single class is one level of specificity whereas the thing that you did dot home dot header dot h1 or whatever it was has like four levels and so you can't do it so basically flat selectors are actually really important to make sure that all your things and not not using IDs are really important to not having um, that those specificity wars and and flat selector means even if it's namespacing namespace it with yes old school ugly PHP style underscores or hyphens so for example it would be you know if you've got a h1 in the header well it might really be the header title so you might do you know dot header hyphen title or something like that or you come up with a more organized structure of handling it for example, BEM or BEM, which says you do dot header underscore underscore title, and that means it's a child. Or you do dot header 
hyphen hyphen inverted which means it's a modifying header or whatever so basically these are systems that you can check out to see how we're applying some of these object oriented things to our CSS so here here's the drama because if I'm just telling you about something you're like look I could have just read your blog post what's the drama of this one the drama is I think systems like bootstrap um, are actually hurting us in this way because they're using purely presentational classes which means there's no concept of objects here there are they're purely modifiers like basically like nasty loose helpers that you can just apply willy-nilly if you want to hear more about my uh very strong opinions about this go check out full stack radio episode one where i talked to adam wethin about this for about an hour um but essentially i think that what really helps um is instead of using presentational class like pull left pull right pull whatever you use not 100 percent semantic because you can kind of go crazy on there but more semantic naming where you say okay this is you know dot rail or dot primary content or whatever and then you can apply those styles you know using those object oriented names um if you want to use bootstrap there's a really great article called bootstrap without the debt that my friend benson lee introduced me to and we've been using that a lot so we write class names according to this kind of oocss bam style but then we just use sas to pull in bootstrap styles into there um that's it i would love to hear what you think especially you adam wathen tell me why i'm wrong here because uh, this whole presentational classes thing i think is still up in the air um so that's it so i need to come up with a theme song um so i don't have anything so this is my theme song so Five Minute Geek Show, it's the best of the geek shows. A five minute geek show.